right, so Hackintoshes are fairly basic in the way they, they go. This Mac is very, very strict on what runs and what doesn't. The most important things to making your Hackintosh run is your CPU or your processor, your graphics card, and your motherboard. So these are the ones you want to do research on to make sure you get the correct Hackintoshable parts. We have to be kind of careful with the things that we get for Mac. So these are kind of the things that I've gotten here. I got the Black Edition Gigabyte motherboard. I have an i7 core Intel, and then I also have a graphics card, which is NVIDIA. That's a GeForce graphics card. The next thing you will need is, of course, an 8 gig gigabyte stick, which we'll use, we'll use for installing software. The additional components you will need to give you your RAM, your power supply, and, of course, your hard drive, and, of course, the case, and any additional components that you want. RAM, you want to be a little careful about what you get on RAM. I'll leave a link down in the description on a website that you can go to to go get a list of Hackintoshable parts and things like that. Instead of buying the additional components that I need, I'm going to actually use a PC, and I'm going to take out the non-Hackintoshable parts and put in my Hackintoshable parts. In this case, I'll be leaving in the power supply and the hard drive in this case, and removing out the motherboard and the graphics card. The RAM I will reuse and actually put back into my Hackintosh. So the first thing we're going to do is install the CPU into the motherboard. Now one of the most important things to do, and I don't have one of these, but you probably should have one of these, is a bracelet. And the bracelet grounds you. So per se, if you ever have static, you, you could have the possibility of frying the motherboard. Now right now it's in a static proof case, so it's pretty much safe from, from static, but you always want to be very, very careful with, what, with touching electronics without a static proof. It also comes with a manual and other things, which you can feel free to read if you want to read them. Now, this would be a good time before you touch anything. So reach over and touch metal. Make sure yourself's grounded. If you don't have a bracelet, then put it on top of the static proof bag. Installing a CPU is fairly simple. All right, so what you have here is you've got this little lever and it comes down and it comes out like this. That's a lever that comes up. Now we're going to flip up this piece, and you see your CPU slot. So what we're going to be doing before we launch too far into that, so here's our CPU cover, which we'll show you how to put that on. Alright, so here's your CPU. So the most important thing about removing a CPU is you never, ever, ever want to touch the bottom of the CPU. This part here, the bottom is very, very important. And this, this CPU has a notch in it, and the notch makes it really easy to install. It's basically virtually impossible to install these things wrong, but just always be care very, very careful with it when moving it around. You also will see an arrow in the bottom right corner, which will kind of show you where to go as well. Now there are notches that you might not be able to see in it, but there are ones here and ones here down on the CPU. So you want to make sure that those notches are lined up correctly when your CPU, when your CPU goes in. Now, put the CPU in, making sure that this piece is underneath the screw. And this lever is fairly hard to put in. Kind of, it's it's a it's a push to get in there. So just always remember that it, it takes a it takes a push, and then this piece will pop off. So that's just a cover. Make sure you read those too. Sometimes they have you take those off before you put the CPU in. So there's your CPU installed. You normally can read your motherboard to see where your CPU fan plugs in. So in this case, I'm going to now install this thing. And this one, usually, sometimes you have to apply CPU grease. But this already has CPU grease already applied to it. So we don't have to worry about that too much. I'm just gonna place it down. Make sure all the holes are lined up. Alright, next we now are going to press down. And it should pop in. Just like that. The CPU should move around now. 
There you go. Next, we're going to plug this in. It's almost impossible to put in plugs in Just like that. Your CPU is installed. You can also put in your RAM and all the other stuff if you want. I'm going to wait to put my graphics card in until the very last thing. It's nice to have the motherboard in the case before you put the motherboard, before you put the graphics card in. This here is the case that went over on top. I'm going to go ahead and keep that just in case I ever have to take this back or do something like that. All right, there it is. It's installed. We're going to put in the little connector piece for the motherboard in. Make sure you put these in there in there the correct way. So it goes in like this. So I'm going to go ahead and snap that in. The actual board itself, make sure I got all the screw slots in the correct places. I'm just resituating some of the mounts for the motherboard so the motherboard will fit in correctly. Alrighty, so now that the motherboard's in it, we're now going to put the RAM in. Alright, my RAM is installed. This helps you out for finding where wires go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the fan in here. We're going to go ahead and plug all the wires in. If you don't know where these wires go, you can look it up in the manual. Alrighty, let's put the graphics card in. There is our graphics card. It's supposed to be a pretty Mondo graphics card. Now, the awesome install. I'm going to go in this slot right here. Alright, so that's in. So now we're just going to quickly screw that awesome graphics card in. Alrighty, things are looking good. Things are mounted. We're getting ready to test it out here. Most of the cable management was pretty easy installing this most of the time those are kind of hard because you once you get a new power supply it gets a little challenging this is a 430 watt power supply so it should be plenty for all of this so this is mostly the the finished product things i replaced was some ram that didn't fit the very old graphics card that very junky graphics card and of course the motherboard which is what i also removed all righty we are complete with all this now we'll put the cap back on. Next, we can install the software. It's actually a wire, so we gotta be a little careful. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect pretty much all the cables that we can see here. 